اه بس احنا قلوبنا مشغولة بحياتك في الدرجة الأولى عايزينك تسمع وتصلي وصلاتك تصبح مقبولة وتسلم للرب طريقة وتلاقي مشاكلك محلولة في رسالة جاية لك من القلب رسالة من القلب رسالة من القلب Obadiah is only one chapter It's only one chapter It is the shortest book of the Old Testament It's the shortest book of the Old Testament And the message of Obadiah is a, a very unique message because it's a message that does not only speak to the people of Israel or to Judah, but it's also speaking to another nation, and that nation is called the Edomites. The Edomites. I'm going to read a few verses only, and then we're going <clears> to <throat> delve into the scriptures to see uh, what this prophet is teaching us. All right, I'm going to read a few verses only, and starting from verse 1, the Bible says, The vision of Abadiah, thus saith the Lord concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor or a report from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen that says, Arise ye, and let us rise up against her, that is against Edom, in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that, is, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy, thy nest among the stars, thence or from there, Will the Lord said, he says, I bring thee down, I bring you down, saith the Lord. Jump with me down to verse 15, please. And it says, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto you or unto thee. Thy reward shall re return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon the holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. And upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and they shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Verse 21. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. And can I just say, we are all enemies of God. The Bible says plainly, all we have, all we like have sheep have gone, all we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone's gone on to his own way. The New Testament declares it and he says, for all have sinned and, and come short of the glory of God. And the truth is, according to Paul in the, in the book of Romans, we are all enemies to God. That's why Paul the Apostle declares in, John, in Romans chapter 5, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. So the only way we can actually turn to be from an enemy to a friend of God is to receive his word and to believe. For with that faith, it is impossible to, to please him. So when you receive the word of God and you believe, and believing is not just trusting you know, in your head, but believing is trusting in your heart and depending on God from all things. Repenting, not just from every sin, but repenting from Trying to live life in your own strength. When you do repent from that and you depend on the strength of Christ, Christ says, okay, I'll take you in. I'll receive you. I'll adopt you. I'll make you my own child. 
and I will guarantee your hope and future. And this is what we see in the book of Abadiah. You see, the descendants of both Esau and Jacob continued with the same kind of characteristics. But God still gave to both nations and to all other nations. And if you read, for example, the book of Habakkuk, as we studied together in our Bible studies on Zoom, we actually saw that God dealt with the Babylonians. Not just you know, when you read the book of uh, uh, Jonah, you see that God de de deals with the Assyrians or with the, or the Ninevites. So we can see that God does not only deal with Israel, and God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So don't ever say that the Old Testament God is only the God of Israel. God is the God of every nation. The book of Daniel tells us that the people of this world, the nations of this world, may know that God is sovereign and that he gives authority or power to whoever he wills. He's God. And as we see in the book of Abadiah here, we actually see at the end that after the Lord speaks through Abadiah and he warns Edom and gives them the opportunity to repent and he actually tells uh, Judah or Israel that because you've trusted, I'm going to take care of you. At the end, the Bible tells us that the Lord himself will be the king of all. All the kingdoms will be the Lord. And that's linking again into the New Testament. And you notice what he says in that last verse, and saviors shall come on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. In other words, he's reminding us of the New Testament when one day in the future, the Lord Jesus come, will, the Lord Jesus will come again. And we are as his saints with him to reign over this world. What a wonderful God we worship. But this morning, God actually warns us of some things. And he warns you and me not to be an Edomite or an enemy of God. So what did, what did Edom do? What, why, you know, and kind of say, by the way, God never says that Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated until the very end, the very last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. And it doesn't mean like what we understand because, see, this is what we need to do is we need to understand the Bible in the terms and in the way that they understood it. Because when we do, then we can take it and apply it properly to our lives. So what did Edom do? Notice what the Lord says. Now, when Jacob and Esau were born, God actually gave um, uh, Rebekah a very uh, plain uh, prophecy. Uh, if I go back to Genesis chapter 25, and I'll just read you these things. The Bible says that um, Rebecca went and inquired of the Lord, and uh, the Lord answered her with these words. He says, he says unto her, um, you know, uh, in verse 23, <clears throat> verse 23, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the old than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So God is in, in his omniscience because he knows the future. He actually is God, and he is the one all-knowing that knows everything. He actually made that prophecy and said, I know what's going to happen. And God just say, God knows everything about you and me. Psalm, 30, Psalm, Psalm 139, David says, Lord, the words that are even on the tip of my tongue, even before I think them, you know them. So let me say, nobody knows you. Nobody knows me better than him. So it's better that we actually trust him. And so God gave this prophecy here, and now we see that this prophecy is coming on to uh, in its progressing uh, fulfillment. And here we see that Esau... That's what he did, what he says. God says to him, Behold, I have made thee small among the nations. Thou art greatly despised. Why did he do that? He says, Thy pride of thine, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. 
Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Now, if I take you and study a little bit further about Esau, we actually know that Esau eventually, when they separated, uh, him and his brother, they separated, he actually lived in a part of the world, and geogra geographically, south of the Dead Sea. And this is where Edom is. So we can see that Esau had a pride of position. Proud of position. He was proud of his strength. Edomites became a very wealthy nation. They actually became trading with the Arabs and, uh, you know, they actually became good friends with many of the nations around them. But they always continued to be against Israel. Now notice, these are brothers. Not just brothers, they are twin brothers. My goodness, sometimes we think that relationships would actually just save us from the trouble that we, are, we may experience in our life. But can I just say, nobody can save you from trouble in your life except Jesus. You just go to him. And don't compare yourself with anybody else like Esau did or like Jacob did because they both were wrong in comparing themselves with each other. The truth is they really needed to hear and listen to the word of God and submit themselves or surrender to the word of God and to God. Esau was very proud. The truth is, the words that speak about Edom here, so notice what he says in verse 4, Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. You know what's that almost similar to? It's almost like I'm reading Isaiah chapter 14 when it's actually talking about Lucifer. Lucifer who actually said, I will ascend to heaven. <clears throat> I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And God says, yet. Thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Why? Because the New Testament gives us the principle to that. And the principle is, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth more grace to the humble. When we learn how to humble ourselves, when we learn to just leave our pride and repent of our pride. When we learn to listen to the word of God and surrender or submit ourselves to him, we can enjoy the protection of God, the deliverance and salvation of God, just like eventually we see Judah or Israel did. So can I just say today, let's not just look at history and understand that that's fine to understand history but let's take the principles of the word of God and apply them to our hearts can I ask you this morning are you an enemy of God you say pastor that's a hard word look I'm not using that word lightly I'm just using it biblically because the truth is we are all enemies of God we are all dead in trespasses and sins. We were all enemies by our thoughts and we actually served the lusts of our lives, the lusts of the eyes, this lust of the flesh and the pride of life. We all do. And don't ever think that you're better than anybody else because when you do and you start comparing yourself with others, let me just tell you, you're doing what Edom did, what Esau did. Just let's humble ourselves and learn of our blessed Savior, whom the Apostle Paul tells us about him. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, which is in Christ Jesus also. What's this mind? He didn't think of himself. He thought of others. He humbled himself and served the redeeming purpose of God's love. You see, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, there was nothing wrong 
if he had turned the stones to bread because he was hungry, 40 days not eaten. Is there any sin in turning stone to bread? No. Was he able to do that? Yes. But why didn't he do it? Because he emptied himself. You know what that means? That means he submitted himself to the will of the Father. He said, I'm not going to do anything except what my Father approves. Not what I'm going to choose to do and then God approves. No, no, no. He said, this is what we do. We actually come up with a list of things and says, Lord, I hope that this list please you. Can you just sign and stamp this list? And God says, no, no, no. He tears it out, shreds it, and he actually puts a blank sheet of paper in front of you. And he says, you sign down here because I'm going to make, give you the list. It's not my will. It's not your will. It's the will of God in our lives. So don't be an Edomite in being proud in your life. Don't be an Edomite in having an indifference in your life or a life of apathy towards others. Notice what the Bible tells us regarding the Edomites. Notice how in verse <coughs> um, 10, it says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest, on the side, on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast one of them. But thou shouldn't have looked on the day of thy brother in that day. Thou, thou should not have looked on that on that day of thy brother in the day of his. Uh, uh, that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of the distress. So what did Judah do? What, what did Edom do to Judah? Well, when the, when the strangers came, you know, we have a, uh, an Arabic proverb that says, me and my brother is against my cousin. And me, my, and myself and my cousin are against the strangers. But this brother, Edom, stood with the strangers against his brother, Jacob. When the strangers came down against Judah and against Jerusalem, he stood on the side. He didn't he made himself as if he, you know, he's, not, he's not part of it. Can I just say, we cannot be on the side. We cannot be always on the fence. Sometimes we just have to make the decision and we're going to let the Lord make the decision for us. We're not going to let a political party, we're not going to let even a church or a denomination or anybody dictate to us where we stand. We want to let the Lord himself, his word, dictate to us where we stand. And don't be apathetic like so many of us as Christians living in the world today. We hear things and we say, oh, I don't care about that. What about this? Oh, I don't care about that. Well, they're going to live their lives, so I'm just not, not going to say anything. Hey, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You have to say it sometimes. You have to speak it out because you are giving honor to the Lord. And don't be apathetic. Don't be indifferent about the things because what is eventually going to happen, and if you read the book of Obadiah, you see that the allies of Edom eventually turned against them. And the Lord says to them, he says, you know, when the thief comes, he actually takes whatever he wants from the house. He doesn't take everything. But when your enemies, who were your allies, your friends before, are going to come against you, they're going to clean you out. They're not going to leave one thing. And when they destroy you, they're going to cut you off. They're going to not leave anything to be remembered of you. 
You see, the world is a very dangerous place. Not because those who do evil, but because those who don't look on things and take a decision. Albert Einstein says, because those who look on and do nothing, the world has become an evil place. We boast ourselves that we are something, but we're nothing. And the New Testament is very clear, saying, he who thinks that he is something, let him know that without God giving him, he is nothing. You see, it's God who gives me even the very breath of my air. My heart that's pumping inside, it's not voluntary. It's God who keeps it pumping. God who gives me life. And I have to acknowledge and give him the credit and the glory. Because he is my maker. And he's not only my maker and creator. But he's also my savior and my deliverer. And this morning, I'd like to say to you in closing. Do not be proud, independent of God, and despise the spiritual things of the world. Unfortunately, we live in a day and age where our young people are no longer caring about the spiritual things of this world. They say, ah, oh, that's religion. That's to the old men, to the old people. That's Esau attitude. Despising the responsibility that God has given you. Don't be proud because God, no matter how high you go, he will bring you down. I love the expression that Habakkuk used in Habakkuk chapter 2. And, you know, I know some of you have actually heard it before, but I loved it when uh, the Bible tells us that God speaks to the Babylonians and tells them, because you have consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul, you know, the Bible says, For the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer. You know, in other words, he says, he says to him, you're going to, see, you're going to build your cities up high like the Edomites. You're going to think that you're strong, so strong nobody can actually reach you. But can I tell you, even if there is nothing left in this world, and what you have built is nothing but absolute destruction, let me tell you something. The wall will cry out. And the beans will answer back and say, this is how a proud person is going to be destroyed. But well, the Bible says very clearly in the book of Proverbs that pride goes before destruction and the holy soul before a great fall. Don't be proud. Don't even think that you don't need God. God is calling you this morning. You may be amongst us. You may be with us according through the uh, internet service or through social media. Can I just tell you, I plead with you this morning. If you have any questions concerning the spiritual things of your life, if you have anything concerning knowing about God, we are more than willing to send you a Bible to speak to you and answer your questions. You can actually click on that uh, uh, link on the link on the on the Facebook or you can actually call the number on the screen in front of you and we'll be more than glad to answer you and to just converse with you and we'll be delighted not to answer you our answers but from the Word of God but come to the Savior make no delay for here in his world in his word he's shown us the way let's humble ourselves Learn from our Savior. And let's follow Him. For He is the God who saves. For He is the King who created us. And one day, all the kingdoms of the world will be His. You're going to have to face Him. And you see, another theme in the book of Abadiah is that the day of reckoning is certainly coming. There is no escape. You must prepare to meet God. And each one of us, no matter who we are, even if you're the queen or the king, even if you're the president of the greatest country in the world, you're going to have to stand before God and give an account for your life. 
for you will face him one day, either today as a savior or one day as the judge. For he is the one that will judge all individuals and all nations. He is the God and there is none other. It's my heart's prayer. Thank you.